let's take a look at AC circuits. So previously we looked at DC circuits, where DC means direct current, and in those situations the current flowed in only one direction. The current was produced by a cell or battery, and the potential difference across the cell or battery was constant. When we talk about AC circuits, or alternating current circuits, the current is going to oscillate. It's going to alternate from one direction to the other, and it's produced by a generator, of, given this symbol, a little circle with a wiggly line in it. And the potential difference across the generator also oscillates. So we can represent this in a graph. The potential difference from a DC circuit is constant. The potential difference from an AC circuit oscillates. It goes up and down, from positive to zero to negative to zero to positive. So how does an AC generator create this oscillating potential difference? Well, it uses Faraday's law. And a common design is to use a rotating coil within a magnetic field. I'll draw it right here. So in this situation, as the coil rotates, theta changes. Remember, theta is the angle between the magnetic field and a vector perpendicular to the loop area. And if theta changes, then the flux changes. And if the flux changes, then, according to Faraday's law, an EMF is generated. So, if the flux is alternating like this, if it's oscillating like this, then the EMF will oscillate like this. If you're into calculus, here I've drawn the flux as a sine, and the EMF would be the derivative of that. So the derivative of sine is negative cosine. So the EMF looks like a negative cosine. Now there are also designs for AC generators where you keep the coil stationary and you rotate the magnetic field, but essentially it's the same idea. But whatever the design, in an AC generator something is rotating, causing the flux to oscillate and causing the oscillating EMF to be generated. Now, we can do a little bit of calculus also. Let's say that the flux is equal to BA cosine theta. And theta, we could write that as omega times T, where omega is the angular speed, the speed at which rotating. Well, if we do a little bit of calculus with Faraday's law, do that, do a little bit of chain rule, the EMF generated is equal to NBA omega sine of omega. This omega is hanging out. Big point, the reason why I went through that is this is saying that if the rotation rate of the coil increases, then the maximum value of the EMF will be greater. You'll get a greater amplitude of your EMF if it rotates faster. Now, let's think about the power that's generated by an AC generator. And to do this, I'm going to draw potential difference in the AC generator and current in the AC generator, or coming from the AC generator. So power is equal to I times V. So if we take the values of each of these graphs and multiply them together, we'll get the value in the power graph. Okay, well, if you look, we're always either multiplying a positive times a positive or a negative times a negative. The power will never be negative. The power oscillates, but it's always positive. And also note something interesting. The power oscillates at twice the frequency of the potential difference and the current. It oscillates twice as quickly. Interesting. Now, if the current has a maximum value, which we call I0, and the potential difference has a maximum value, which we call V0, then the maximum value of the power would equal those two maximums multiplied by each other. But maybe we really want to worry about the average value of the power that's generated. So if we think about the average, let's see, well, we can't just multiply the average of the PD and the average of the current together, because the average of the PD is zero and the average of the current is zero, so that doesn't make much sense. Instead, we're going to use RMS values. RMS stands for root mean square. And a full treatment of this mathematically is a little bit beyond what we're going to do right now. But the RMS value of the current is defined as the maximum value of the current divided by the square root of 2. And the RMS value of the potential difference is defined as the maximum value of the potential difference divided by the square root of 2. Okay. So if we use these RMS values, then the average power generated by the AC circuit is equal to the RMS current times the RMS PD. And we can express that in terms of their maximum values. The average power is equal to 1 half times the maximum current times the maximum PD. So let's summarize all this together. RMS current is maximum current divided by square root of 2. RMS PD is equal to maximum PD divided by square root of 2. Ohm's law still holds no matter what. 
The resistance is always the ratio of the PD to the current, whether it's maximum or RMS. Maximum value of the power is I0 times V0, and the average value of the power is one half of I0 times V0. All right, now let's look at a transformer. A transformer is a device which changes the potential difference in an AC circuit. So transformers have a symbol that looks like this. And the meaning of it is we're going to have one AC circuit, which has a PD and a current. If it's on this side, let's call it the primary. And on the other side, we're going to have an outgoing or secondary AC circuit with a different PD and current. And physically, it looks a little bit like this. We have a metal loop called a core. And then we have a primary loop over here and a secondary loop over here. In the primary, there's a primary current and a primary potential difference. And there's also a number of coils wrapped around the transformer on the primary side. On the secondary side, there's also a secondary current, secondary potential difference, and a secondary number of coils. So the idea here is that the AC current in the primary coil is going to create an alternating flux in the metal core. This creates an alternating flux in the secondary coils, which then induces an EMF in the secondary circuit. And the relationship between all of this is given in this expression. The primary EMF divided by the secondary EMF is equal to the primary number of coils divided by the secondary number of coils, which is equal to the secondary current divided by the primary current. If we have a situation where the secondary or output EMF is smaller than the primary or input EMF, then it's called a step-down transformer because we're going from a high EMF to a low EMF. And if the secondary EMF is greater than the primary EMF, it's called a step-up transformer because we're going from a lower EMF to a higher EMF. Now, transformers are not perfect. They always lose energy. They're not 100% efficient. The efficiency of a transformer is given by the energy in the secondary divided by the energy in the primary times 100%. And these energy losses are caused mostly by little currents inside the metal of the transformer. Um, and these little currents inside the transformer, they cause little fluxes which oppose the flux that's transmitting the energy between the primary and the secondary. These little currents that show up in the core are called eddy currents. And there are ways to make transformers more, more efficient. One is to make the core out of thin layers. This is called laminating the core. And when you do this, you separate those little layers of core with insulating material, which reduces the eddy currents. You can also make the core out of a soft magnetic material, which is better at transmitting the flux. Uh, you could also use wires, which have low resistance. Um, and you can also tr design the transformer so that all of the flux is transmitted into the coils. Now, transformers are primarily used to step down volt voltage from power plants for use in our homes. Um, the power plant will generally generate high voltage, low current AC power. And in our homes, we want low voltage and high current AC power. So the transformer accomplishes that. It takes the high voltage from the power plant and steps it down to low voltage for use in our homes. Now, part of the reason why we do this is because all wires have some small resistance. And when the power plant is transporting that current, that voltage, that power to our homes, the power lost in the wires is given by P is equal to I squared R. Okay, so the wires have some resistance that we can't control. At least we can't, we can't annihilate it. We can't prevent it from being there. If the current is large, then we're going to lose more power in the wires. So in transmission wires from power plants to near our homes, we use high voltage, low current AC generation. High voltage, low current. In that way, we get less power lost. In our homes, however, we want that high current, low voltage. So we have these step-down transformers between the power plant and our home. Often we want to take AC and turn it into DC. And the process of doing this, it's called rectification. 
Simple rectification is often accomplished with a diode. A diode is a device which only allows current to flow in one direction. Here's the symbol for it. And when we draw it this way, the current is only able to flow in the direction that that arrow points. One way to get close to direct current, if we have an AC input, is to set up a simple diode circuit like this. And if we do that, if this is the generator output, then the potential difference across the resistor would look like this. And that's not DC, but it is a little bit better, at least the potential difference is always in one direction. The current here would only flow in one direction, so the potential difference will only exist when the current flows across the diode. We can do a little bit better, we can get a little bit closer to DC uh, situation if we have full wave rectification. And full wave rectification circuit is a little more complicated, and if you follow the current, you can justify that if this is the generator output, then the potential difference across the resistor would look like this. Now again, that's not a DC output, but it is a little bit closer. Um, it's a little bit better. And we can get even better. We can get from AC to even closer to DC by adding capacitors. Capacitors would smooth out this graph, uh, making it closer to a direct constant current. We will see capacitors in the next section, and we'll talk about it then.